Ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Asia Regional Director for Plan International, and we are one of the largest job rights organizations in the world. Our purpose is to promote children's rights and equality for girls. I'm here to speak to you about the types of partnerships needed to enable young people in this region to prosper. So let me begin by saying that I believe that we are at the cusp of monumental change in addressing poverty in Asia. And I say this for two reasons. First, I believe that soon what we call economic poverty can largely be eradicated. Much of this has to do with government policies that have enabled the private sector to penetrate the most remote areas of the region, providing economic opportunities and lifting millions out of poverty. Second, because of greater openness across borders, millions of people, especially young people, are on the move, looking for jobs both, both nationally and internationally. As a result, many countries in ASEAN are at full employment, with several countries reporting unemployment rates below 3%. While these unemployment rates are remarkable, it is largely young people that today are unemployed. The ILO estimates that young people make up half of Asia Pacific's jobless, and young people are five times more likely to be unemployed than adults. Despite the availability of jobs throughout the region, young people continue to struggle to find work, and companies struggle to find talent. Why is this? Some say that young people lack skills, knowledge, access to information, but I would argue that there are many young people being left behind by ASEAN's economic development. Young single mothers, kids with disabilities, or others that may come from disadvantaged minority groups. They carry extra burdens that prevent them from being productive and lifting themselves out of poverty. And that's where Plan International comes in. We work with kids with disabilities, kids living in conflict, girls who have been trafficked. That's our target group, those that are most often excluded. So let me tell you a story, and this is my favorite story. I'd like to tell you about Mai. Mai comes from Vietnam, the Central Highlands. Mai never went to school. Mai was born with no hands. Mai taught herself how to read and write from an old radio in books that her father gave her. When Mai was old enough, she worked odd jobs as best she could. Life was tough, but Mai had the will and determination to find a better life. So a couple of years ago, Mai joined one of our youth employment programs in Vietnam through our local partner called Reach in Vietnam. After several months of training and interning, Mai is today a web and graphics designer, fully employed and taking care of herself. Through programs such as REACH, we have more than 80,000 kids who have been trained in our programs. But the question is, how do we go from 80,000 to 80, 800,000 or 80 million? So let me come back to the title, what partnerships are needed to enable young people to prosper. And I'd like to borrow from our partner, Accenture. Let me share three concepts under, that underpin the key to successful partnerships. First is convergence and co-creation. We need a convergence of interests between business, government, civil society, and individuals. Through convergence and a diversity of ideas, we can co-create new hybrid business models and programs to solve today's problems. Second, 
is organizational engagement. Nowadays, there are a growing number of meaningful ways to engage corporate staff to create shared value. Three good programs that we have are with Hyundai Motor Company, Citibank Foundation in, in Thailand, and last, the Kesko Corporation in Finland that's in partnership with the Swedish government and Plan International to strengthen the supply chain in the Thai fishing industry. In the best programs, corporate staff are actively engaged in various ways, such as trainers or technical advisors in our programs. My last point is around disruptive innovation for development. The challenge before us is to reach millions of young people who are entering the force, workforce every year. And this is where technology can play a vital role. Through the support of Accenture and the Asian Development Bank, Plan International has created a digital ecosystem that seeks to provide a platform to reach hundreds of thousands of young people seeking work. To conclude, let me say that in the midst of ASEAN's rapid growth, we must reach out to those young people who are being left behind. Why? It's a win-win situation for us all. If young people can find decent work, we will have more consumers, markets will grow, business will prosper. This is also the right thing to do. We need to ensure that young people can secure employment and work themselves out of poverty. This will have a lasting benefit on their families, their communities, in society as a whole. Thank you very much.